Okay, hi guys, and welcome to the show. Today, another behind the scenes look in Switzerland, although you join me here in the United Kingdom as I'm recording uh, this particular part. So if you missed the first episode, we were looking at JLC. Uh, I'll leave a link to that in the description below. Today, uh, vastly different uh, scale as we are looking at Romain Gautier, a haute horology independent watchmaker from Switzerland, of course. Now, before I get into this video, I've got to do wristwatch check and I'm wearing my little Amiga 1945 Pilot's Watch. A little bit in tribute to uh, Mr. Gautier because it's a three-hander and it will become apparent later on why three, you know, hours, minutes and seconds is important to this video. But it has the blued hands, uh, the poire style blued hands, that beautiful patina dial. But this watch is very special to me because it's from the latter part of World War II. I can only imagine, every time I look at it, I imagine the stories this watch could tell. But most importantly of all, it is an in-house Amiga movement. And that is kind of the overarching theme of today's uh, video. It will all make sense in just a moment. So a little bit of background on the main man himself. Romain Gautier was born in the Valley du Jour in Switzerland, which as you guys know by now is the heartland of watchmaking. He qualified uh, in 1997 in constructing precision machinery and then in 2002 he got his MBA and his thesis was actually starting his own watch company, which became a reality in 2005 uh, with the launch of his own brand. And what is so unique to Romain is that he took decades of experience in engineering uh, and the, the precision machinery, of course, into this with what I would describe as a no compromise approach to Hort horology. So, Without further ado, let's uh, switch perspectives and have a closer look. Guys, by the way, this is an active manufacturing facility, so the noise wasn't, you know, it, it was a bit difficult to work with, but let's start off with a few words from the man himself. Most of the big uh, manufacturer, they do like a very short, you know, because they don't know to explain. Yeah. Me, it's my background. So I can explain with details, with, uh, uh, with an understanding, and I think the watchmaking has to push you now the, the knowledge that in Switzerland we also have. Because you know, it's not in every place in the world that we, they have the capacity to produce micro parts, uh, micro uh, gears, uh, and all of that kind of things. So that means uh, we have to think about that. And if we don't show uh, that kind of things, it's like everybody can do what we do. No, it's knowledge. So it's why uh, for me, I always like to show, and uh, you will see the production is like, you have the same suppliers for many kind of uh, things, but it's like an Italian restaurant. Mm -hmm. You take 10, you will have 10 different tastes and quality, mm -hmm. and some of them will be out of the, you know, like, uh, wow, that yeah. one was the, yeah. In, in the production and for everything, it's always the same. So we are very discreet in terms of uh, uh, we don't do any publicity, uh, we don't do any salon, uh, and uh, all of the brands that we are working for uh, are big boys. And uh, it was only by the networking about me in the past and the friends and, and yeah. all of that. But we are lucky to work for six of the top 20, I can say. Yeah. So this is really good. We don't necessarily talk a lot about that, but it's also our capacity today that a lot of uh, collectors, yeah, some of them know about that, some of them don't know. But it's also one of the DNA, if you consider the value of something. For me, the meaning of independent, it's that. So here we are in the main facilities and we're joined, as always, uh, by the wonderful Sophie Furling, shout out to her. So now Romain is going to give um, a tour. Um, of course, we start at the very beginning with the bare essentials, the raw materials. So here we have brass, titanium, all different kinds of steel, silver, precious metal, of course. And what is amazing about this is that, and I wasn't aware, but uh, Romain was explaining here, the properties can vary so much, can have a a, a big 
effect on how they behave in terms of the manufacturing process. So everything has to be tested and the astonishing level of detail. And afterwards, Roman was keen to show us, especially some of the micro components. These were absolutely minute. To give an example of just how small these, these uh, finished component, micro components were, Roman himself, to give an idea of scale, he actually plucked a hair uh, from the back of his head and put it under the microscope. That way we could, we could get an idea of just how uh, small he can produce, which is phenomenal. I mean, it really shows a, a level of mastery, just awe-inspiring. And there you can see a pinion and I think a wheel as well. Um, so just imagine that these have been cut. These are complex, you know, three-dimensional parts. And these parts have to be deadly precise because, of course, if they're not, it can affect a performance later on. And after that, we have machinery until 12 millimeters, some 20 millimeters, and now we will go to see the, where we do the, the complex parts that we can go until 52 millimeters. Yes. Now we're looking at some rotors. Uh, that features in the uh, Insight micro rotor. The micro rotor takes all of the thickness, I can say, and the space. We see here, you know, it's only dedicated for the micro rotor. Yeah. It's why for me, the automatic, the most beautiful way to, to, to talk about automatic is the micro rotor. Because the micro rotor never covers the things that you want to see in the watch. Ah, of course. Yeah. It's dedicated in a part. And it's really a caliber dedicated to have the automatic gear, but you can enjoy always the back of the watch without anything covering the, the movement. Yeah. Here we're looking at a wheel. Uh, but what is incredible about this particular piece is the beveling, uh, the ability to, to bevel the edges on the inside. This was previously impossible, but thanks to these machines and Romain's uh, mastery of them, this kind of detail is now attainable. And he was saying that, imagine if uh, Jäger and, and Adouman and Patek were alive today, what they could achieve with this, with this type of technology. It would be incredible. But what this demonstrates is Romain's ability to not only use very traditional techniques, things done by hand, but also cutting edge that push the limits that were previously impossible. Uh, now we're moving on to a separate section where metals are heated, for example, blued hands, etc. Heating the steel to different levels, you can change the color, but not only for aesthetics, also for the manipulation of these metals to make it behave in different ways. And what is really cool is that Roman, you know, he'll just jump in. It's a bit like a, a, a pizza oven, actually. <laughs> um, but yeah, he'll just jump in and he's perfectly capable of doing all of these procedures himself. And this is the knowledge that he is adamant about passing on to everybody that works there in his team. He's just really hands on and, and it's wonderful. So here we're seeing uh, a variety of different abrasive materials and each one gets a different kind of polishing. And this is done in these machines that are a little bit similar to, I guess you could say a dishwasher, but uh, <laughs> forgive my, my crude um, analogy. But this of course, because some of the parts are so small, you can't physically get in there, you know, with a, with a file and do it by hand. So here we are at the, at the step of uh, every pinion uh, to get the right quality. At the extremity of the pinion, uh, this is the two, I can say the extremity are uh, kind of pin mm -hmm. and rolling inside the ruby, okay? That part of the pinion has to be perfectly wrong, has to be uh, with a very good quality surface. Uh, the precision has to be very high, so it's always a tolerance of 4 microns. If, if we don't do this operation, this is a kind of thing that all of the, I can say, Swiss made, or it can be the high level of watchmaking, this is an operation absolutely necessary. So now, uh, if you remember in earlier videos, we looked at the decoration of uh, pelage um, finishing on 
on bridges and plates. Well, Romain goes even further than that. Here we see a wheel being polished. Uh, even the wheels are polished here, and this takes an enormous amount of skill and time. And when we do the, you know, the, the auto blood piece, it's not just to doing that. After that, you see, she, she check under the microscope. So every wheels are checked one by one. It's not in a boot, something is missing. She start again and check again. Yeah. But what we call the old gum in terms of supplier is normally when it's like 100 percent check when it's uh, at another level you check maybe like uh, 20 percent 10 percent and when it's a mass you just pick you know few yeah. of them yeah. yeah it's okay yes so this is the big difference about uh, the different level so this just goes to demonstrate every single part is checked and rechecked again incredible level of detail and talking of testing and control and quality now we move into a department dedicated to testing uh, every single component when you have to do in the assembly about the escapement wheel and the pinion oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes here comes the precision mm -hmm. here comes the all of the work that we did before has to be perfectly well done mm -hmm. Otherwise, what will happen? Your escapement wheel is going to turn like this and like this and, and, and no way, it's, it's not possible to use. So the result at the end is the assembly. And if the assembly is good, it's okay. If the assembly is bad, all of your production is gone. So you can understand every step until the assembly is really, really, really important. Here, they are using a special kind of camera that will turn the wheel and give an accurate measurement, making sure that it is straight, because even a, a, a micron of difference can have adverse effects to a watch's precision, especially when it comes to dealing with parts that are so small or very delicate such as this aluminium wheel that we just saw here every part is tested um, utterly incredible and r rather mind-boggling you can see by my expression on my face I'm just you know I'm, I'm a little bit uh, just taken aback at the level of detail if you think about you receive a drawing and you have to deliver doing an invoice and to be paid has to be exactly as the drawing you have no tolerance, the tolerance are on the drawing, so you respect or not. So when you go in a level that you sell what you are able to produce, this is an another level. And it's why I'm happy to have clients, because all of that push also us to be at the right place. Roman then showed us one of the smallest components. Now unfortunately this part was so small that our cameras could not pick it up. In fact, when I looked for, for it, I couldn't see it. I had to get him to, to point it out. It just goes to show what we're dealing with here. So for example, that kind of tool, we also indicate the precision. Yes, but here is the micron, three microns, and that one is one tenth of the micron. That's crazy, that's insane. So you see, all of the process when we, we do micro, micro like that is mm -hmm. the manufacturing is complicated, the finishing is complicated, the control is complicated, the assembly is complicated. That's just one. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> you can't even see it with the naked eye. Now we move to a section dedicated to the beveling of uh, the bridges. Now because of the nature of the curves, um, and the way they are designed, it's not physically possible for a machine to do it. They have to be done by hand. And this is a, a great example of what separates Roman's team um, to other watchmakers. Sometimes they spend 20 hours just on one particular part to get it right, using um, a special wood that is, uh, actually I think it's locally grown. And you'll see it in a lot of watch factories, but the difference here is how it's used, the time spent getting these curves absolutely perfect. For the first step, 
to really start to create by the file the sharp angular that the machinery cannot really do. So our beveling are not only flat, 45 degrees, but it's a radius. Then the second step is always with a cavron, as we say in French, which is a, a, a base of wood with sandpaper fixed on it. So this is the middle step of finishing. You see from very raw, from the file, mm -hmm. started to be a bit more finished. The last one is with the diamond pasta and the gentian, which is one of the kind of uh, uh, plants uh, uh, right, exactly right, right. that we have uh, right. very typical uh, in Switzerland. And I consider that what we do is the haute couture of the of the watchmaking. That we take the time, we use the best things, uh, and if we need time, we take the time. The result at the end is the most important. And the value of what we do, I think, is the real sense of when a collector spend hundred thousand, or fifty thousand, or two hundred thousand in a product like us. It's balanced. And the, some of these skills, there isn't actually a school. Um, where you can learn these things. So it's all about handing down the, the, the knowledge. And this is what Roman is, is so adamant about. Um, he's very hands-on. It's, it's extremely rare to see a watchmaker that is involved with every single aspect of the production of his timepieces. Um, it's really quite inspiring. And the result speaks for itself. Uh, a lot of this you just can't learn at school. I mean, yes, of course, you can you can study engineering like he did, but um, what sets him apart is that hands-on experience, that knowledge of knowing the tolerances of different materials, of knowing um, how to use the machines to the best results and what is possible from you know a sketch to the finished um, product. It's one thing to design something you know, to, to, to sketch an idea, but it's quite another to realize it in physical form, to, to have it produced and knowing what it takes, um, especially technically from an engineering perspective. And I found that extremely insightful um, and totally changed my perception of uh, what it truly means to, to produce a, a luxury watch. If you look at his timepieces they don't have outrageous complications he primarily is still doing hours minutes seconds uh, but he's doing it to the highest level a massive advantage of this freedom and having this control so i'm very very optimistic and, and quite excited to see where he goes next and, and i can't imagine whatever he has planned for the future it's going to be enthralling exciting so now we're going to have a look at the final thing the final product watchmakers who they are working together and for production of 50 watches a year uh, yeah we are, we are good with uh, these two people who were three mm -hmm. watchmakers, but um, no, uh, we were thinking about in a day to be produce a bit more, and uh, but no, we will go organically and slowly at the speed. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, so many collectors doesn't know about us, so many countries that I never visit, so I have time, yeah. I have time to, mm -hmm. to think about. The vision, if a day we can produce like 80, 100 watches a year, I think it's going to be is going to be that. You see the beveling? Yes. The beveling is polished, the light is like floating on, mm -hmm. no vibration, nothing. So the finishing on the top of the bridges is spectacular. Yeah, yeah. And the map, the contrast, and all of that is take time. Yeah. Level of finishing. Uh, yeah. and, uh, it's spectacular. Right. We've got all sort of three different collections here. Right. So you've got uh, the heritage mm -hmm. collection, sort of the very best of fine Swiss watchmaking mm -hmm. uh, then you've got the freedom collection it's more, more casual more, more, yeah right. a little edgier mm -hmm. uh, they, I guess you could say they get gradually edgier with the you've got natural titanium cases here and some sort of anthracite finishing on the movements and wow. then gradually it gets well, I would say it's the, the enraged probably the, the, the starkest right. of those with the sandblast with titanium case and then right. this this is the exception collection of, uh, of unique pieces, okay. um, objet d'art. Right, right, right. So now we're going to take a look at some of the watches. The first of which is the Prestige HMS. Uh, this is the watch that um, he launched the brand with 
back in 2005. It features a completely original in-house movement and design, an extremely elegant hand gear shade open dial with uh, off-center time indication, uh, which is fairly traditional, but the manufacturing technique and the movement is extremely contemporary. So wonderful balance of elements of traditional watchmaking, such as the hands and elements of the dial, but then brought bang up to date with this um, extremely luxuriously decorated movement that is completely of his design. What makes this watch innovative is its hand wind system, which is basically a flat crown and you can wind it while on the wrist ingenious approach to to uh, winding a watch so this is obviously a manual wind caliber available in a variety of precious metals uh, red gold white gold platinum uh, i believe there's a titanium edition now and what's called the enraged edition which is a kind of sportier version the watch itself is about 41 millimeters by 12 millimeters now we're going to move on to probably the most interesting of uh, Gautier's collection. And this is, of course, the Logical One. Now this is an award-winning watch. And again, we see Roman Gautier's very distinctive style of balancing traditional um, watch design cues with, you know, cutting edge, um, innovative, technical uh, feats, which in this particular case, features a completely redesigned take on the classic fusée and chain mechanism. Typically, this would involve a small uh, metal chain slowly winding around a kind of cone shape, a conical gear uh, to balance out the torque from the main spring as it winds down. And as you guys know, is, is one of the um, downfalls of a traditional main spring. Uh, and can really affect its precision, uh, accuracy. While the objective here has stayed the same, Roman Gautier has ingeniously redesigned the, the, the system. So what he's done, first of all, is he's swapped the conical gear for a, a snail cam. This allows the chain to remain flat instead of being positioned at varying angles. This allows for a more efficient transfer of energy and it also cuts down the chances of something breaking or misaligning, for example. The chain itself is, and this is a really cool thing because it's it's a perfect example of old world techniques, but yet uh, modernized thanks to Romain Gautier's ingenious um, um, engineering here. So he's used ruby rollers which you can actually see from certain angles and inserted them inside the steel links. And this cuts down on friction um, and, the, and also removes the need for any lubricants. And we were actually lucky enough to see one of these chains being assembled. Uh, the rubies are minute. And again, um, this is a testament to uh, Roman Gautier's ability to uh, create such tiny, intricate, parts to such a um, precise level it's 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 quite staggering but not only do we have uh, this ingenious um, chain system uh, we also have the mainspring sandwiched between two sapphire plates uh, and this is in place of sitting in a fu fully steel barrel for example and this eliminates another source of friction and en energy loss so Gautier has created his own pallet lever system and gear tooth profile to further improve uh, or increase the strength and efficiency. All of this culminates in the movement that provides two days of power and nearly a constant force, a wonderful, and, and I think the name suits it perfectly because it's just a logical thing to do, I mean, but so clever. Now, all of this, of course, is done and decorated to the highest degree um, and something we saw in, in such intricate detail. Uh, we have stainless steel components, um, copper, brass, titanium, German silver, all at work inside. Um, and this doesn't even account the, the various graining, snailing, brushing, uh, black polishing applied as well. It's, it, it really is an impressive feat of not only engineering, but decoration. It, it's just 
utterly mesmerizing. So the degree of, of, of detail and time spent here is phenomenal. It takes 20 hours alone just to hand finish uh, the, the barrel bridge, for example. And I think the total amount of time is about 90 hours for, for just the finishing of all the components. Incredible. So if we look at the watch itself, we see the chain system beautifully displayed, but then the, the actual time displayed in a very traditional uh, smaller dial uh, with these wonderful diamond shaped uh, hands and sub seconds just at six o'clock of that dial. A stunning marriage of traditional and cutting edge. Now to wind the watch, you'll notice that there's no um, conventional crown. It has a button that is located on the left side. So every time you press this button, you wind it while on the wrist. I think the total is about 46 hour power reserve. So nearly two days of constant force. Again, we it's available in white gold, titanium, red gold, platinum, etc. And also, the enraged version. This particular piece is about 43 millimeters in diameter and about 14 millimeters thick. And probably the most important watch is the perfect embodiment of what Romain Gautier is all about. Innovation, technical ability, the highest, highest possible degree of, of finishing, not ostentatious, not over the top. It's, it's truly a, a, a technical marvel um, that was conceived from start to finish, ultimate in in-house manufacturing when it comes to wristwatches. Now, of course, there is a kind of what they describe as an objet d'art version. Uh, this is the logical one, secret. So here we see a marriage of horthrology uh, and art that pays tribute to the vibrant city of Rio de Janeiro. So we have the logical one with an extra hinged cover. Again, a, a little nod to pocket watches of back in the day. Uh, and on top of this, there is a cutout to display uh, the dial, uh, but then the rest of it has 352 unique mirror polished miniature tiles of jade and agate that are painstakingly hand finished and hand applied. Um, a little bit like a mosaic, but far more, um, shall we say, complex because you, you almost don't see the where they're joined. It's, it's a really stunning... Um, work of, of artistry and, and craftsmanship. So the latest uh, watch and the third is the Insight Micro Rotor. So this is the first automatic. And my personal favorite, uh, I also really like the white enamel dial. This was unveiled, I think at uh, Baselworld in 2017. And you can choose from white, blue or black enamel dials. So this is wound by the micro rotor, which is visible from both sides. We have hours, minutes and seconds. Uh, and, and an incredible level of depth, um, especially to the dial. So you have a frosted main plate uh, with a large aperture cut into the nine o'clock. Uh, and you find a huge sweeping bridge holding up the, um, the namesake uh, micro rotor. And by giving each component a soft brushed or, or, or frosted finish, and then a, a sharply beveled edge, uh, th this clearly defines um, each part and kind of makes it jump out, it gives it a lovely three-dimensional um, aspect to it. We have this stunning uh, curved crystal, just gives the, the, the dial a wonderful impact and extremely legible. But the real star of the show has to be, as always, the caliber inside. This is comprised of 206 components, uh, 28 of which are jewels. The watch itself has two barrels that run in a series. And this provides a consistent power to the regulator through a 80 hour power reserve. For the automatic winding system, Gautier has opted for a 3.86 gram solid gold micro rotor, which is bigger than you typically find on a watch of this size. And for that reason, it has bridges on both sides, which provide additional stability and of course, uh, reliability. Now, th these bridges, uh, as we see in th uh, today's episode, are all hand finished 
to the <laughs> uh, highest of standards. There's a wonderful balance of, of geometry going on, um, how the, the shapes are, are, are spaced together. It's not only technically um, extremely efficient and, and accurate, but also it's pleasing to look at. This can only be achieved by a watchmaker that is designing it and controls it from start to finish, from the very first sketch or idea in his head to the finished um, product. One of the advantages of how uh, Gautier said himself, of being free, of, of having full control. Um, so yeah, very, very impressive. My favorite has to be rose gold. It's so traditional, but yet at the same time, extremely contemporary. It's a wonderful balance uh, and, and extremely elegant. And I think the size uh, at 39 millimeters obviously is uh, <laughs> perfect for yours truly. But um, yeah, it's, it's definitely my favorite of his lineup. So this particular watch is only available in rose gold red gold or platinum. I just love the curves, um, and the shapes involved, the way things are positioned. Also, it has a, a lovely sense of symmetry with the subdials, uh, a line of symmetry running through the center. And of course, that sub seconds placed bang in the middle. Absolutely stunning and definitely my favorite. Gorgeous. I've learned so many new things. Uh, thank you so much for giving us the opportunity was a pleasure and thank you so much for you also to take the time and um, to accept the, the invitation and uh, it's always a pleasure as you see you know we love what we do and we respect what we do and uh, if we can show that and explain it's always a pleasure thank you so much my only problem is now i have to save up for one of these because <laughs> <laughs> uh, i'm absolutely falling in love I, i'm gonna have to get one one day so I'm sure you'll agree, quite incredible. I mean, I certainly will never forget that day. Um, I, I learned so much and I've got to say a massive thank you to Stephen, of course, uh, Sophie Furley, the wonderful Sophie Furley, big shout out to you guys. But without a shadow of doubt, a massive thank you uh, to the main man himself, Romain Gautier, for being such a wonderful host putting up with all our, you know, what must seem like rudimentary questions, but he was so eager to explain. And guys, we shot hours and hours of footage. We could have made it into, you know, a three hour documentary. I would love to. Because Roma is such a wealth of knowledge and so keen to explain and, and very open and welcoming. Uh, so it, it was an incredible, unique experience. And I, I can't imagine well, I don't think it's ever going to happen again that a watchmaker themselves will, will give you a, a, a personal tour of the facilities and, and, and explain in such precise detail all the procedures. It was just utterly inspiring and, and yeah, it was wonderful. And I'm so pleased I get to share it with you guys, which is, you know, the icing on the cake, certainly. Anyway, guys, I'm going to leave it there. I don't want to rabbit on too much. Uh, please let me know your thoughts, queries, comments, opinions, all the rest of it down below. Stay tuned for many more videos from Switzerland. Uh, we've got so much um, still to, I've got a ton of editing to do. But anyway, stay tuned for all of that. Thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it and found it useful. And as always, guys, I will catch you in the next one. Okay, ciao.